Hello there. It's time for Most Things Kenobi. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Most Things Kenobi, a podcast about Obi-Wan Kenobi and all things Star Wars. I'm your host, Lauren. And I'm your host, Leanne. And today... Another Q&A session. <laughs> For another milestone. Yes. The big four zero. <laughs> I was actually going to just say that. Where Space twin. Space twin. Of course twin. you were. I've never wanted to be 40 more than I do right now. <laughs> and it'll be the only time. <laughs> yeah. The once and only time we yes. want to be 40. 40 it's episodes. 40th episode. I can't believe it. It's flown by. And we had so much fun doing a Q&A for the 20th episode, and I think the 21st, right? Because we did, we got so many questions. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which, we got some pretty good ones this time around, too. Yes. I think we have a more manageable list this time We do. We do. We <laughs> do. Yeah. We, I remember feeling very exhausted by the end of our last Q&A, because it was going on and on. When we ended up talking about cheese, it's when, it's when we jumped the shark. So but don't worry, we have another food question this time. Yay! So. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. So these are questions people have sent to us on Instagram, Twitter, email. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, DMs. We're just going to... Yeah, Mm -hmm. so uh, we'll just work our way through them, I guess. Shall we start now? (laughs) We shall. Okay, bashing out of the gate with a really heavy question. Not heavy, but intense question. I love it. From Beth, she asked, Why do you think the Star Wars saga has resonated so completely with your generation of fans when it was originally released at a time your parents were college-aged, fully 10 years before your birth? (laughs) Ten years before our birth, at least. <laughs> I feel called out <laughs> with with that uh, that number of years before my birth. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of yeah. accurate. Kind of accurate. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was ten years. I was born in eighty three, so that's close enough. Oh yeah. Okay, I was eighty five. So yeah. Um, that's a good question <laughs> because I mean... we don't like reality. <laughs> <laughs> But then again, who does? It's true. (laughs) I don't know if that's generational or not, but... Probably. Probably. We just have different ways of dealing with it. We like to escape to made-up galaxies. That's just our coping mechanism. (laughs) True. (laughs) But my first initial thought was because the themes that are brought up in the movies are timeless. Yeah. The theme of hope, the theme of perseverance, the theme of getting back up when you fall, you know, good versus evil. These are universal things that never, ever go out of style. And yeah, I think that we all kind of gravitate towards the sci-fi-ness of it all because it's fun because yeah. it's, it's fun to think about. It's fun to see. You know, the technology now makes it even more real. Yeah, for sure. Although I would say that that's true of the generation it was made for. I mean, like, they were coming out of the vietnam war when the Mm -hmm. movies came out and i think that i think that there's quite a parallel to that obviously the movie originally is like referencing back to the nazis in world war ii yes so that's interesting but i think maybe our generation is really into it because we got the re-releases in the 90s and then very shortly after that we got the prequels that's true which That's is true. more than, I mean, although the previous generation was very, very in love with it and obsessed with it, obviously, otherwise we wouldn't have been exposed to it as much ourselves. Yeah. Like if our parents' generation didn't love it, it wouldn't have survived into our generation. This is true. It's true. So you have only yourselves to blame. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. But you're so right. It, it's universal. I think so. I think that's why so many generations, one after another, love it. Because the themes are relatable on every level, basically. Well, I, I have to I have to just interject with some Lord of the Rings here. Oh, because, you do. know, I live and breathe Lord <laughs> of the Rings. The same thing with Lord of the Rings. It was written like so long ago, right? But mm-hmm. the, the overarching message and theme within it is something that I, just resonates with me and, and never, ever 
I, I, I hate to say goes out of style because I don't know that it was ever in style. <laughs> but like the, <laughs> the, uh, the themes are just timeless. And so that's what draws me to certain stories more than others. You know, there are, there are fun things out there that I like. You know, Marvel is fun. I don't know that it resonates with me. It's just really fun. And But Lord yeah. of the Rings and Star Wars big time are, yeah, they're pretty easy to stick with because they're, yeah. so, they're, they're everlasting. I want, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, I mean, you, you, you said that Luke in A New Hope was like you at a point in your life, right? And oh, I don't yeah. mean your hair. Because <laughs> you said there's baby pictures of you with Luke's hair, but... <laughs> I have it right now. I just said yesterday to my boyfriend that I have I have Luke Skywalker hair from A New Hope. If it was slightly longer, but it's definitely just flipping out right now. <laughs> I've got some serious Luke wisps going on with my hair. We days. love the Luke wisp. <laughs> yeah, stylish, never, but always. Yeah, right. Nobody said the hairstyles in Star Wars lasted well beyond the seventies and eighties. No one, no one said anything about that. We're just talking about the themes. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of feathered hair going on. Mm. Um, yeah, definitely. I felt like Luke standing there on the horizon, you know, looking off to the distance, knowing that he was destined for something bigger than just moisture farming. Mm-hmm. Not that I grew up on a farm or anything, <laughs> but yeah, I wanted to go see the world. I wanted to go and experience a lot more than just what my like small town had to offer. So yeah, that really yep. hit me right in the feels. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and and Leia will always be my favorite, even over Anakin slash Vader, um, because as a as a young person, I had never seen a character, a female character, talk and act with such confidence and swagger, yeah, and not be belittled for it. Yes, she owned it, and that made a huge impression on me. Huge. Yeah. Long live Leia. Long live Leia. From Twitter, Thoughts About Star Wars asks one serious question and one funny question. Their serious question is, if Palpatine's intention was to clone himself, why didn't he use the more advanced cloning tech on Kamino? Their funny question is, what do Tauntauns actually smell like inside and out? I thought these were great, great questions. (laughs) So let's answer the first one. If Palp's intention was to clone himself, why didn't he use the more advanced technology? Great question. That's a good question. I mean, if you, I guess if you watch the Bad Batch, you see that they felt it was more prudent to like destroy that facility and put an end to all of that productivity, I guess, the production of clones. Mm -hmm. And it was a show of force too. It was supposed to show like we can destroy entire cities that cover large portions of a planet i mean it makes sense that he should have i'm sure he must have that technology though even if it wasn't on camino because you see even in clone wars he has like moments where you see he's keeping science to himself Mm -hmm. oh yeah yeah what is that the zillow beast remember yes oh i i don't want to remember that i hate those episodes that episode is heartbreaking yeah i don't want to talk about it (laughs) but like he says at the end, I want you to clone the Zillow Beast. And he does it. He just says it to his own little personal scientist there. And nope, they never come back to that mm-hmm. ever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so he might have Camino science and technology on another planet, on Exegol or wherever the hell it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a really good question, though. I don't know if that's ever addressed anywhere in any kind of comic books or novels or anything like that. I mean, they kind of show a cloning facility in one of the Mandalorian seasons, don't they? Mm-hmm. I guess they never really, like, they always hint at it, but never give a full explanation. My explanation for it would be, like you said, he's hiding it somewhere or just mm-hmm. has it somewhere else at the ready. Or number two, he didn't use that technology because he felt above it. That was used to mass produce something. His was probably more, you know, special, according to him. Think yeah. think like a Palpatine. Just think, think like Palps himself. Superior, right? Superiority. Secrecy and superiority. Yeah, that's a really good point. That's what I would think. That's a really good point. He thinks he's superior in every way possible. Well, didn't he make... Snoke and just like dispose of him 
allegedly through the sequel trilogy he was just yeah. disposable and a means to an end yeah so i think he was just like with complete disregard to life he's just playing around with it yeah and toying with it and trying to make it better for himself so i think he he, he was up to something <laughs> as usual right and well like even though he's quote dead now he wants to stop him from another clone returning at some point it clearly if you clone yourself one time you might as well have a few copies, just like Tom Riddle from Harry Potter. Well, my my freaking question is, did he clone someone that he fucked that resulted in the parents of Ray? Because we don't have that answer either. And I, I'm, <laughs> I'm here to ask it. I was just taking a sip of water and literally almost just spit took all over I know. my phone. <laughs> I'm sorry. It was, I just... I just came out with it, but I want to know. Good question. Because who, who the hell would have sex with this man? I don't, I don't even want to know. Willingly. <laughs> Willingly. Anyway, what do Tauntauns <laughs> actually smell like inside and out? That's Let's the next from, question. <laughs> move from one horror to another. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I think, uh, now I owned a horse for a little over a decade. And I always loved the smell of horses. I don't know. It's like an acquired thing. I, I don't know. I think they smell something between like the soft puppy fur of a puppy <sighs> and a horse. I don't even know what that means. But that's my, that's what I would hope that they smell like on the outside. On the inside, salmon. <laughs> just salmon. <laughs> Ow, I just hurt myself laughing so I'm sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not trying to injure anyone. I just threw out my back laughing. I'm so sorry. <laughs> that's so funny. Salmon, that's so very specific. I um, love salmon, but I don't want to I don't want it to be cut open and and allowed me to sleep in it so I don't freeze, you know. Yeah, no. Yeah. I I concur. I guess it would smell kind of like hay. I don't know. Kind yeah. of that like the way like horses straw. smell. Yeah, yeah. cuz that's what I would guess. And then, yeah, like. Go know. for it. Just go know. for it. I was going to say, like, when they're really dirty, maybe they smell like Fritos. Fritos. <laughs> or I like hate, Doritos. I hate Fritos. <laughs> I detest the smell of Fritos. I hate it. Well, there you go. So if they're supposed to smell bad on the outside compared to the inside, I guess, Fritos outside <laughs> and inside raw chicken i don't know God damn. <laughs> all right we need a new question thank you very much thoughts about star wars you've given us a lot of thoughts <laughs> we're gonna go be ill for a minute come right yeah. back yeah <laughs> okay next question Dave asks, when the original Star Wars film was released in the late 70s, was it always envisioned as a multi-episode saga, or were subsequent storylines driven by the commercial success of each release? That's a good question. That's a great question. Short answer, yes. Yes. It, it was always planned. So George Lucas knew that he didn't have the technology in place to tell the story in order, because the prequels was supposed to be of a much more technologically savvy era and he didn't that technology didn't exist in the 70s to portray like in a in a good way <laughs> episode four five and six were not supposed to be it was supposed to be like an era where technology was suppressed except by the empire so he could tell that story because everything was looking dirty and old anyway and he could like lean into that so yeah he told the story out of order on purpose but did always intend to have six films Mm -hmm. the subsequent like tv shows came afterwards but nine films i'm not sure that was always planned couldn't have been yeah i didn't because the last so. three i'm still struggling with so <laughs> secondarily dave asks is the storyline of each film slash episode always distilled to the basic struggle struggle between good and evil distilled is a strong word but i would say yeah but in the end yes everyone loves a good good versus evil I guess maybe it's more like selfishness versus selflessness. And the question of what is good and what is evil. And don't we have a little bit of both? What do we do with it in the end? Yeah. Good question. So yes, in a way. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Dave. Guess who our next question is from? Our friends at Conversations. Oh, nice. Hey, guys. <laughs> hey, hey, guys. 
they ask, obviously C-3PO, according to C-3PO, is the most important character in the saga. Which two scenes do you think he would have taken over and what would he have said and done? Would have taken over every scene. <laughs> <laughs> Had he every been scene he's ever been in, he's taken over. He's a diva. He really is, though. I think two scenes, I would say... I, I'm really surprised he didn't overtake the uh, medal ceremony in A New Hope. <laughs> and just like, excuse me, pardon me, pardon me, excuse me. You know, and then <gasps> comes waddling over and just says something really completely <laughs> off the wall or inappropriate at like the worst time when it's supposed to be this joyous occasion. Yeah. I could see him overtaking that scene. I don't know what he would say, but I would, it would most certainly be inappropriate for the moment. Something that was Captain Obvious. Yeah. I would, yeah. Something Master like that. Master Luke. <laughs> you seem to be getting a medal. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> what scene do you think? Those will be our two scenes. There's what my my one and then your one. God, I don't even know. I'm trying to think of like all the scenes he's ever been in. I mean, he basically tries to take over all of Empire Strikes Back once he yes. gets put on Chewie's back. In which when he's reassembled in the wrong direction. I mean, seriously, poor Chewie. Seriously. <laughs> Got tasked with that. <laughs> the patience of a saint. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, they're trying to go into hyperspace and he's standing there screaming, You haven't finished putting me back together yet. It's like, could you just shut up for five seconds while we save the day here? Was he in the throne was he in the uh the, the dinner table uh scene with No, because he was in the com- no. he was broken apart yeah we could say he would have totally dominated but that would have that would have been very bad though because then it would be vader aka yeah. anakin looking at his creation that's very sad and i want that i really want that on screen i feel like hasn't vader seen he has in, somewhere in the, comics, in the comics that i know like he three people gets kidnapped or captured in the it's comics just, and tortured that's a funny question I love I it. I hate C-3PO. I know you do. That's why this question is so great. <laughs> I love him because, you know, he's he's so unique and I love him. But if I had to be around him all the time, I would, like I've said in the past, I am Han Solo. I'd be like, shut up, Goldenrod. Just Turn like, him off. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> shut him up or shut him down. Thank you, Conversations. We love you guys. Yes. Come on our show soon. Yes, please. Rose Ring Creations on Instagram asked, what do you think is Obi-Wan Kenobi's best quality and what is his worst quality? Hair. <laughs> <laughs> As both best and worst. At times. <laughs> no. That's true. I'm just kidding. I think his best quality is his, his friendly. He's just friendly. He can take a terrible situation and somehow find some humor in it. Yeah. Like, I don't know what that would be called. Levity? I don't know. Yeah. yeah, I mean, he's friendly to the little Ryloth girl, and he's friendly to animals, and he's he's friendly to strangers, and he's even friendly to Asajj Ventress. So, <laughs> he's friendly. I like that about him. What do you think is his worst quality? His worst quality? Oh, God. His inability to just tell Sat- Satine how he feels? Just say it! It's not going to hurt anyone. Just say it. It's killing us all that you're not saying. Like, just <laughs> say it. That's his worst quality, that he just can't admit some things, you know? He's a bad communicator. Yeah. Yeah. How about you? you got to have some good answers for this. I think his best quality is his honor. Yeah. Surely. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. Yes. Because he's one of the rare people who really sticks by what he vows even, you know, ultimately, of course, there's moments where it's like, do as I say, not as I do. But mm-hmm. I really do think he is always trying to do the best thing for the greater good. And nothing mm-hmm. he does is selfish. A worse quality, inability to listen sometimes. Yeah. Like, just the way yeah. he and Anakin never, like, especially in the prequels. In the Clone Wars, they're a little better. But in the prequels, they just never are on the mm-hmm. same page with each other. So when they talk, it's just like always contentious. And it's very frustrating sometimes to watch them be so off from each other. Very true. Those are good ones. Nice question. Thanks, yes, Rose Ring Creations. Okay, Clone Wars collector, a dear friend, says, 
Because I'm weird, do you guys like broccoli? This made me burst out laughing when I saw this Did question. it? Did it? Yeah. I just like the preface, because I'm weird. Do you guys like broccoli? <laughs> Turns out I had it for dinner last night as a side. Not that broccoli wasn't just my dinner. It was a side. Just broccoli. Yeah, just broccoli. I'm on the all broccoli diet. <laughs> That would be terrible for my that, intestines. For everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I love broccoli. You know, I have recently discovered that baby broccoli is my preferred form of broccoli. It's very good. And I think it has more nutrients in it. I am unaware of baby broccoli. I may have to look this up. <laughs> it's really good. I highly recommend it. Was it like young? Yeah. Like Yeah, it's smaller. The stalks are smaller. Oh. Um Sounds delightful. Really. It doesn't have the giant like tree yes. head on it. Yeah. It's like a much smaller head. Yeah. So that I huh. highly recommend. They're very okay. good. So we don't just like broccoli. We like baby broccoli. I love baby <laughs> broccoli. Yeah, but I hate celery. I just shouted earlier across the house today that celery is the devil's vegetable. <laughs> you know what? I bet you Palpatine in his cloning facility probably has jars and jars and jars of just fresh <laughs> celery sitting around going, mmm, celery. <laughs> he only eats celery. Yeah. <laughs> it's so stringy. I ate some for lunch and it's just, I, every bite I kept saying, why am I eating this? It's fibrous so, water. It is. It's good for you. That's why I ate it. But dear God, why would anyone? Maybe I just had a bad batch of it, but this has turned into it. This has turned into a hate recording on celery. <laughs> I could go on. Okay, we'll save it for Patreon. <laughs> I'm gonna do an all celery episode. Just I'm dead. Kelsey on Instagram asks. What would be your ultimate one versus one face-off battle? Any media, any time period. So you could mix, like, fandoms, I assume, in this. This is difficult. One versus one? Oof. I would have to say, and I have reason for this, and those of you out there who know will know, Daenerys Targaryen and Cersei Lannister. Here's why. Because we didn't get it in season eight of Game of Thrones, and I'm still fucking bitter. I want one-on-one -on -one with those two divas, and I want it now, and I want it the way that it should have been. Are they like nemesis? Yes! And they never got to face off against each other? No! Not, not properly. It was so stupid. Anyway, in fact, if we're going to go that length, we'll have Arya also face off against Cersei. Either one of them. It would be my ultimate one versus one that I thought we were going to get and never did because pfft, season eight. <laughs> and everyone knows what I'm talking about who, who is listening and knows Game of Thrones, right? Yeah. I want that because we didn't get it. That's what this question is, right? It's like the things that we always wanted, but we never, never got. Yeah, but I would love a Lord of the Rings crossover like Aragorn versus Luke or something like that. But I don't want it to be oh, hateful man. because I love them yeah. both. They're both. I was like... going to say, neither one can win. No. <laughs> They're both wonderful. Well, it's like somebody asked Mark Hamill who would win Captain America versus Luke. Or like, could Luke's lightsaber cut up Captain America's shield? They would just have a nice talk and agree to settle it and go have coffee. That's how, yeah. that's how that would turn out, in my opinion. They're both, like, perfect heroes, so. Yeah. I do, like, and I know that this has kind of happened a little bit, but I don't know if it's fully happened the way I'd like it to, but, like, I would really like to see... Nightwing versus the Joker Ooh. by himself with no Batman help. That's a good one. Yeah. That's a real good one. I have like a fanfic of it that I would like to write someday. But like there's always because there's I don't know if you know the story, but Jason Todd is the character that the Joker mm -hmm. kills in certain versions of Batman. So it's always like the Joker and Jason Todd. And I'd like to see the Joker versus Dick Grayson. Instead. There you go. So I guess that would be mine. You're the DC comic girl here. Yeah, I mean, I like Batman. I don't like all DC. I do like Wonder Woman. <laughs> oh, yes. She's lovely. Oh, she is a lovely. I would have <laughs> a cup of coffee with Wonder Woman. Yes. I would, in fact, I would have a cup of coffee on that all-woman island because, hello. Yes. 
Oh my I god, just, I love the Amazon. Take me to yeah. a place where it's all strong, independent, well-trained women doing what they do best and like being friendly towards each other. Can we have that? Yeah. And I'm sorry, but it's Connie Nielsen is the queen, and then the um, Robin Wright yes. is the warrior princess. I don't care. They are fucking amazing. amazing. They're like personal heroes of mine. And to see them riding horses in gold yes. like armor, just I sobbed. I have chills again. <laughs> I have chills again. Every time you describe something, I get chills. Because <laughs> I'm weird. Not because I like broccoli. But... <laughs> Speaking of which, you mentioned fanfics. Clone Wars Collector asked us, which, what is one of our favorite fanfic tropes? Wait, <laughs> it, is Hurt Comfort a trope? Oh, yeah, definitely. That's my favorite. Yeah. Yeah. I like that, too. I'm such a sucker for it. I hate to admit that. I know. It's <laughs> the, uh, But it's, like, it's a thing. It's a real thing. And, like, Wumpy, like, Hurt Comfort. Yeah, I yeah. like that a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, like... Also, like, a little embarrassed to admit that publicly. <laughs> Whatever. That's what we're here for. <laughs> yeah. I know. I know. There's always, like, lovers to, or haters to lovers is one. And um, I'm trying to think of other tropes. That's not one of my favorite tropes, but that's one that exists out there. My um, my Bucky fix, my, my Marvel Bucky, is based around one of my favorite tropes, which is two people who are not meant to be are connected by something that nobody else has. Only they have it. They're meant to be together because they have that connection. Quote, unquote, that connection. Whatever that may be. You yeah, know? And in like this that. case, ah, I love that trope. <laughs> <laughs> like, we're special for this reason and we belong together because of it. Like, that shit, you know? Yeah, that's really fun. I love that kind of stuff, too. I like when heroes are broken down. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, like, I know it sounds it sounds so terrible to describe, but, like, when, like, my favorite character is broken and then has to, like, rebuild anew. I yes. love that. Yes. That is very heavy in your fix. It is. Which is, no, wait, I'm sorry. What? No, not, star not sorry. It's excellent. <laughs> it's excellent. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I love that in, in just other stories. It's not even in fan fiction. I always love when the hero is taken by the villain or something like that, and then they have to, like really decide no i am gonna stay a good person mm -hmm. because that's who i really am or something like that i i do love that kind of stuff our friends over at the Mo moisture farm report <laughs> that's a great name they're awesome they're very friendly on twitter they ask what snacks does obi-wan keep in his jedi starfighter for long journeys <laughs> this is a great question <laughs> Are we talking like Star Wars snacks or just any well, like... See, I'm inclined to say cupcakes because I think he's kind of has a hidden sweet tooth. Because like, <laughs> it's that whole like, <laughs> Jedi are bland, but Obi-Wan likes cupcakes. You know, like... Yeah, or flaming Hot Cheetos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know how you store them in a small starfighter, but I feel like he would pack one. It would have to be one of those like little plastic clamps. Yeah, with the dome that keeps it. Safe. Yeah, with the dome to keep the, the the frosting intact. Yes, that's that's what I think. That's funny. I like that. Anything I come up with wouldn't be as funny as that. Well, I mean, that's what I like to think he has. He probably just has some sort of like galactic peanut. <laughs> like, like. You I was know. gonna say a dry pretzels. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And not even the twisted ones, just the straight. No, just the straight ones because, uh, -uh. Like pencil. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Straight like Obi-Wan, like. <laughs> Doesn't like anything too salty or twisty. That's or... it. <laughs> I love that. He, the Moisture Farm Report also asks, do we know when Obi-Wan developed his fam ha famous hatred of flying? And someone already answered that on Twitter, that it was revealed in Master and Apprentice. Yes. Yeah, there's a scene where he accidentally ends up flying his, I don't know if it's a starfighter or whatever it is, the ship he's flying, ends up inside another ship, flying down the corridors. and That would do it. That was, yeah. <laughs> he liked flying until that happened, yeah. and then he felt like he never wanted to do it again. Exactly. Which I don't think that would be realistic. I think Obi-Wan probably would love that kind of shit. <laughs> I think he likes flying more if he keeps cupcakes with him. Maybe that's why he keeps the cupcake with him, because... Motivation. It's a comfort. Yeah, it is it's a comfort. comfort cupcake. <laughs> I love it. 
What cupcakes aren't comfort cupcakes, though? Like, all mm. cupcakes are comfort food. It's true. <laughs> it's absolutely true. Um, how are both your fur babies doing? Clone Wars Collector X. Leanne's cat still making sure to make his rounds in every session. Absolutely. He was here to start this session. Absolutely. Yeah. He makes an appearance almost every time. I think yesterday was the first time he just slept on the couch in the other room the whole yes, time. Yes, and we got so lucky. And But you want to talk about the most unlucky? We did our interview episode with Conversations. Go check it out. Um, yeah. Not just our our guest episode, but like all of them. They're hilarious. But like yes. the cat would not, like Clarence would not stop walking across the table where I record bumping yeah. into the mic, jumping, playing with the blinds by the window next to this desk. I mean, he was so bad. He would not be ignored. No, no. We love him. Oh, yeah. He's a sweetie. It's hard to edit out sometimes. That's all. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. Same thing with Luna, my dog. How's she doing? Her and her beard. I love her beard. Oh, my gosh. It's snowing. Like, really hard, heavy snow right now. And she was outside in it. And she came in. Her whole beard was oh. just a big smoosh of snow. Oh. She's her so favorite thing cute. is to stick her whole head into a pile of snow. She loves to do that. I love that. I love it's her. It's really cute. She's She is so cute. And she will not be cuddled, damn it. <laughs> uh-uh. She's, too, 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 she's a strong, independent woman. And she don't need nobody. That's true. <laughs> Except she needs my boyfriend. But yeah. otherwise, she needs nobody. She and needs she her papa. Is, she's a salty little mm-hmm. firecracker. Mm-hmm. That's for sure. But thanks for asking. <laughs> she's good. <laughs> I'll tell Clarence that you asked. He'll be happy. He'll say something in response, I'm sure. Yes, he's very vocal. He is. I like that, though. Yeah, I do, too. Just not when we're recording. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, folks, we're going to have to wrap things up here for this week. Just like our last Q&A session, we received enough questions to create two episodes. So join us right back here next week as we finish answering all of your brilliant questions. Thank you so much for joining us here on the Most Things Kenobi podcast. Remember to follow us on Tumblr, Twitter, and Instagram. And don't forget to subscribe on your favorite podcast player. And if you would be so kind, don't forget to rate us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. And you can always find us over at mostthingskenobi.com. So until next time, my space twin, may the force be with you. Always.